Hello, I'm Woodbury Mayor Ann Burt. As you know, 2020 was unlike anything we've ever seen before. We all have our own stories of challenges we faced from shortages of needed supplies, business crises, remote work, distance learning, and health concerns, just to name a few. For those of you who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, I want you to know that my thoughts are with you. For all in our community that have been negatively affected in various ways, I hope our community, those friends, relatives, and neighbors can help provide you comfort, peace, and support as collectively we persevere, move ahead, and even begin to thrive again. While we are facing many unique challenges as we move forward, we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon as well. I wanna tell you about what we have in store in 2021 and beyond. I would like to thank everyone for participating in the public process by voting last November. I would like to congratulate council member Andrea Date on her reelection and welcome Kim Wilson as our newest council member. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Amy Scoggins who chose not to seek reelection after 16 years on the council. Amy retired on December 31st as the longest serving city council member in the city's 53 year history. We cannot thank her enough for all of her incredible work over the years and we wish her the best in her future endeavors. In addition to council members Date and Wilson, I'm honored to serve with council members Steve Morris and Jennifer Santini. I am so proud of how we on the Woodbury City Council work together to conduct the business of the city. Since we're talking about council members, I thought I'd share some thoughts about Woodbury's structure. There's some important differences in how Woodbury's government works and how our city council operates in comparison to other local municipalities. Our city is set up as a mayor city council form of government consisting of an elected mayor and four or six city council members, four in our case. As chief administrative officer, the administrator is responsible for all the operations of our city and the management of the city's workforce, including employee appointment nominations, implementation of city council policies, enforcement of ordinances, and preparation of the annual budget. Woodbury City Administrator is Clint Gridley, and he's served in this role since 2004. Our role as City Council in Woodbury is focused on policy and oversight, not the day-to-day -day operations. Each council member and I have part-time roles. We balance our professional careers while doing our best to serve our community. In addition, resident volunteers serve on commissions that meet regularly and advise the City Council on specific issues. We have more than 35 volunteers, including four high school students serving on the Audit and Investment Commission, the Economic Development Commission, Parks and Natural Resources Commission, and the Planning Commission. This does not count the number of volunteers serving on regional commissions such as the South Washington County Telecommunications Commission and the watershed districts that serve Woodbury. We also seek additional volunteers to serve on project task forces when needed. This has been our model of government that has helped us build and sustain our high quality of life and helped us earn national accolades as a great place to live and raise a family. In fact, in 2020, Money Magazine ranked Woodbury as the ninth best place to live in the nation and number one in all of Minnesota. We're also proud to have received a AAA bond rating from Standard & Poor's, which have been assigned consecutively since 2009. This allows us to issue bonds at the best interest rates possible because of the financial stewardship that our AAA rating represents. This is the highest possible validation of our financial systems and controls. We also received the Performance Measurement Certificate of Excellence for Annual Performance Measurement Report. Since the mid-1990s, the City of Woodbury has published an annual performance report that provides data on the performance of the city services and operations. The performance measurement report provides a narrative and five years of data for each performance area, which includes all of the city's departments and divisions. 27 cities in the country received this highest Certificate of Excellence award, with Woodbury being the only Minnesota city to receive it. Some of the criteria for this award include strategic planning, budgeting, leadership, and satisfaction surveys. Woodbury is now Minnesota's eighth largest city based on population. Today, our population is approximately 74,500 people, and it's expected to reach 80,500 by 2030 and 87,800 by 2040. This stable residential growth continues to grow the tax base. To continue to be successful and plan for the future, it's important that Woodbury has a strategy and a vision. The City Council has identified a list of critical success factors which the community must excel at in order to remain and develop as a desirable living and working environment. The six critical success factors are safety, quality of life, business climate, youth development and education, city services, and environmental stewardship. 
Part of setting a strong vision is understanding the need for adaptability as well as long-term planning. For this reason, the City Council selects strategic initiatives that we feel deserve a special amount of attention or analysis. This work corresponds this year with the Biennial Community Survey, which provides additional input from residents into these priorities. The strategic initiatives for the period of the 2020 to 2021 year are drinking water sustainability, parks and trails replacement plan, and adapt and enhance public safety effectiveness. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, 2020 was truly an unprecedented year. I'm proud of how city staff adapted to the unique challenges presented to them to keep our departments fully operational. City Hall and the Public Works and Public Safety buildings are all open. In City Hall, operational changes have been made to serve the customers within the lobby area. However, the public should also continue to conduct business with the city remotely as much as possible. City staff is available via phone or email to help with service requests. In order to continue practicing appropriate social distancing, some council members, as well as members of the staff, continue to participate in city meetings virtually and may do so until further notice. In addition, the public continues to have the option of participating in meetings online. All advisory commission meetings will follow the same protocol as the city council meetings until further notice. Neighborhood meetings will continue to be held virtually or in using a hybrid in-person or virtual model until further notice. The federal government is leading the COVID-19 vaccine dispersal, distributing vaccines to each state weekly. Then each state distributes the vaccines to regional distribution sites, generally county public health departments. Our public safety team, including fire, EMS, and the police staff have been given the opportunity to receive the vaccine. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to present many challenges to our local businesses. In addition to helping connect businesses with federal and state financial support, the city took some steps to allow flexibility in its regulations to address the challenges our businesses are facing during the pandemic. Two examples include making changes to regulations to allow for greater outdoor dining opportunities and making modifications to commercial code enforcement to help navigate impacts from state issued executive orders. Additionally, the city provided refunds to businesses that held liquor licenses, but were not able to sell liquor due to the pandemic. The city of Woodbury experienced strong growth in the residential sector with building permits issued for close to 900 new residential units in 2020. Residents are attracted to Woodbury's convenient location and other amenities such as our exceptional parks and trail system and our outstanding schools. The city encourages a diversity of housing stock to accommodate people of all ages, income levels, and family status. There are several new apartment projects under construction, including Aspire at City Place, which is located to the northeast of Barnes & Noble, and Beyond Apartments, which is located at the southwest corner of Hudson Road and Settlers Ridge Parkway. In addition, Sundance at Woodbury, which are rental townhomes, is wrapping up construction and has started leasing their units, which are located off of Karen Drive, just north of the Legends of Woodbury. Despite the economic downturn caused by the pandemic, the city saw a significant amount of new commercial construction, with five new commercial buildings adding more than 172,000 square feet of new space. The largest of these new commercial projects is Kendeva Drug Delivery, a 137,000 square foot facility being constructed north of Hudson Road and east of Settlers Ridge Parkway. Formerly 3M Drug Delivery Systems, Kendeva is a leading global contract development and manufacturing organization that specializes in solving complex drug delivery challenges for its pharmaceutical and biotechnology customers. Kendeva will bring about 150 jobs to Woodbury in 2021, with additional growth anticipated. Construction is expected to be completed this summer. Woodbury is known as a healthcare destination, and in 2020, we continue to attract healthcare options to our commercial real estate inventory, including two new dental offices, Park Dental and City's Edge Dental in the Urban Village near Jerry's Foods and St. Therese. Completing the list of new commercial development in 2020 are the Fresh India Grocery Store, which broke ground in October and is located next to Chuck E. Cheese and Super Target, and also a Kinder Care Daycare located near Jerry's Foods at the intersection of Bailey Road and Benjamin Drive. Complementing the new commercial development are some exciting redevelopment plans near Valley Creek Road and I-494, one of the major gateways to the city. The council approved a redevelopment plan for this area in late 2019, and the first implementation step of this plan was the removal of two substandard buildings, the Key Inn and the former Spire Credit Union building. 
The removal of these buildings will set the stage for new development, including a new Chick-fil-A in 2021. Other components of this redevelopment include the successful remodels of two multi-tenant office buildings on Wood Lane Drive, as well as a future office building and a multi-tenant financial retail use. Two other redevelopment projects in this vicinity include the MGM Liquor Store, which is expected to be raised to make way for a Highway Credit Union branch, and the former Barnes & Noble site, which will be redeveloped as a Chase Bank branch. Finally, another addition to this gateway area is the new Dunkin' Donuts Baskin Robbins, which opened in mid-2020 near Pizza Hut, southwest of Valley Creek Road and I-494. The city is excited about the level of reinvestment and transformation that is happening in this very visible entrance to our community. 2020 was a busy year in transportation. The state completed its work at the I-94, 494, 694 interchange, and Washington County completed the Bailey Road Improvement Project, which included constructing the new roundabout at Wood Lane Drive and Bailey Road. Staff is drafting a bicycle and pedestrian plan to establish policy guidance and recommendations for implementing bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure within the city. Gathering public input related to the needs and concerns when walking or biking within the community will be a critical part of the plan. In addition, safety related to multimodal transportation and recreation options will be evaluated. Washington County will be working on phase two of the Woodbury Drive improvement project between I-94 and Tamarack Road that began last year. This year's work will involve the reconstruction of Tamarack Road, Commerce Drive, Rivertown Drive, and Hudson Road. Further south, the county is expected to begin work on the Woodbury Drive capacity and safety improvements project between Bailey Road and Dale Road. This project will improve traffic safety operations and increase capacity with a four-lane divided roadway design and the addition of a roundabout at Dale Road. A Lake Road transportation study was completed in 2016, which recommended converting portions of Lake Road from a four-lane roadway to a three-lane roadway to increase safety for vehicles and pedestrians. The city was successful in being selected for a $1.6 million in federal grant funding through the 2020 regional solicitation process for this project. Work is proposed to include pavement rehabilitation and restriping of the roadway from Wood Lane Drive to Pioneer Drive. Construction is anticipated in 2021 or 2022 and will include traffic impacts that will be identified through the project planning and design. In coordination with the Lake Road Lane Conversion Project, the intersection at Lake Road and Pioneer Drive is proposed to be reconstructed. At this time, a single lane roundabout or a traffic signal upgrade is being considered. The project will include various pedestrian improvements at Lake Road and Pioneer Drive, as well as Blue Ridge Drive and Juniper Lane. Construction is anticipated to begin in May or June of 2021 and wrap up in October. Impacts to both vehicle and pedestrian traffic during construction are to be expected. Each summer, the city also conducts roadway improvement projects in neighborhoods. This year's improvements are slated for Hudson Road, west of Radio Drive, and the Preserve Area, generally west of Radio Drive and south of Hudson Road. The city will also continue collaborating with its regional partners to bring transit options to Woodbury. The Metro Gold Line is a planned 10-mile dedicated bus rapid transit line that will connect St. Paul, Maplewood, Landfall, Oakdale, and Woodbury. The Gold Line operates primarily in bus-only lanes and will generally run to the north of I-94 until it reaches Helmo Avenue in Oakdale, at which point it will turn south and enter Woodbury over a new bridge, which will include dedicated transit lanes. There are three transit stations proposed in Woodbury, the Tamarack Station, Woodbury Theater Station, and the I-494 Park and Ride Station. The Gold Line benefits the business community by providing additional transportation options to attract workers from outside of Woodbury, including those with non-traditional hours or those that may be transit dependent. Construction of the Gold Line is expected to begin in 2022, and the line is expected to be operational in 2024. It's been a challenging year for our first responders who are helping protect us during the COVID-19 pandemic and through the civil unrest in the wake of the death of George Floyd. I'm so proud of how we've responded to these challenges and look forward to watching the department make stronger community connections in the coming year. Here are some things that we are working on in public safety. The Woodbury Police Multicultural Advisory Committee, or MAC, was created to enrich the relationship between community members with diverse identities and experiences and the police department. This committee is made up of community members from diverse backgrounds who discuss issues regarding race and policing. 
This is a unique opportunity for public safety officials to engage with the community and have a dialogue with them about how to best serve everyone. In addition to this, a member of the Multicultural Advisory Committee participates in the interview process for new police officers and provides input. Speaking of hiring, I want to share more about how we are recruiting, hiring, and training our police officers to ensure we're putting the right people on our streets. Before hiring, candidates are subjected to a rigorous application and vetting process, which is followed by an extensive background investigation, physical examination, and psychological examination. The officers that comprise the Woodbury Police Department are well-educated. They must have a bachelor's degree, and several have a master's degree. One of our sergeants earned his PhD and leads citywide efforts in diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Despite the pandemic, we continue to provide thorough training for our officers. Once it is safe to do so, we'll look forward to returning to our regular training program and begin fully utilizing the HERO Center, a regional state-of-the-art intensive training center for police, fire, and emergency medical services located in Cottage Grove. The facility is owned and operated by the cities of Cottage Grove and Woodbury and helps us recruit and retain some of the top public safety personnel in the region. Once it is safe to do so, the facility will also host community-based safety education and training for the public, such as CPR, firearms, and recreational vehicle safety training. We also like to take care of our public safety staff who work every day to protect us and help us maintain our high quality of life. To help our officers maintain mental wellness, we have incorporated several programs, including new hire initial training, annual mental wellness visits, a peer-to-peer -peer support program, and stress debriefings with mental health professionals after critical incidents. At the same time, public safety is also helping the public navigate mental health challenges. Our police department developed a community support unit that is improving the quality of service we provide for these calls. The intent is to bridge the gap between 911 calls for a crisis situation and connecting the people in crisis and their families to the help they need to cope with these situations for the long term. So many of us chose to live in Woodbury because we enjoy our extensive parks and trail system and recreational amenities. In 2020, people used our parks and trails at a record level as many sought safe, active opportunities during the pandemic. In addition to enjoying our parks, many dusted off their clubs and honed their swings at the city's Eagle Valley Golf Course, which recorded the most rounds of golf played in one golf season since it opened in 1998. Meanwhile, activity at Healthy Sports Center has slowed during the pandemic, primarily due to state orders limiting indoor activities. With the state restricting the number of spectators allowed at hockey games, we've collaborated with a company to start offering live streaming of games on both ice rinks. Visit mnhockey.tv to learn more. Activity at Central Park is also slow due to the state social distancing guidelines. The adjacent county library has reopened with limited hours and Lookout Ridge Indoor Playground in the lower level of the park was expected to start a slow, phased reopening in mid-February with reservations required. We look forward to the development of Valley Creek Park, a community park located off of Valley Creek Road east of Settlers Ridge Parkway. Over the past two years, staff conducted a master planning process based on community input gathered through neighborhood meetings, online surveys, and in-person at Woodbury Days in 2019. Results favored restoring the natural space, adding natural and adventure play areas, creating passive recreation opportunities, and enhancing paved and unpaved trail access. We anticipate construction activities in the park and Miller Barn restoration to begin this spring. Recreation programming is challenging during the pandemic as we continue to make changes to our traditional programs to meet state social distancing guidelines. A new program called Recess Reimagined was created to accommodate families with school age children that needed care or an opportunity for socialization and physical activity. We continue to offer many other programs and activities through the pandemic, both in person and virtually, such as Night to Unite, adult softball, dance and music lessons, playground programs, to name a few. Be sure to look for more programs in the modified summer programs brochure, which is expected to be mailed in mid-March. There's something for everyone and many more program opportunities available online. Sometimes in life, bad things happen that we have no control over. The emerald ash borer infestation in Woodbury, first discovered in August 2017, is one of them. The city has partnered with Rainbow Tree Care to implement a citywide bulk discount ash tree treatment program for residents and businesses. The program in its third year has allowed for the treatment of 1,752 public and private trees in Woodbury. In 2020, 
Rainbow Tree Care treated 66 public and 822 private ash trees. Information is available on the city's website at woodburymn.gov EAB. Woodbury's water continues to meet all federal and state guidelines and standards for drinking water. In January 2020, the city council declared a local emergency to expedite construction of a temporary water treatment plant to treat four of the city's seven wells that were taken out of service due to higher levels of perfluorochemicals in the water. The temporary water treatment facility was put into operation in June and will assist the city in meeting peak water demands. The city continues to work with other East Metro communities and the state of Minnesota to develop long-term drinking water solutions for the East Metro. The temporary water treatment facility construction and operation have been and will continue to be funded by the state of Minnesota through their settlement with 3M. The long-term solutions are also expected to be funded through the same state of Minnesota and 3M settlement agreements. With three wells remaining out of service until a long-term solution is implemented, water use efficiency will continue to be critical. Since 2016, the city has distributed more than 2,600 water scent certified smart irrigation controllers to single family homes in Woodbury. Each controller is estimated to reduce outdoor water usage by 45% per household saving at least 30,000 gallons of water per household per year. You can help reduce water use by purchasing a smart irrigation controller online for a discounted price of just $35. You can sign up for the 2021 waitlist at woodburymn.gov slash smart irrigation to be notified when the controllers are available. Commercial and homeowners association properties located within Woodbury with irrigation meters using city water also are eligible to receive funding assistance for improvements that reduce water use. Approved projects will receive 50% funding assistance up to $8,000 for one or more improvements. This is the last year the city will be offering the commercial program, so apply while there's still time. Those interested in participating in the 2021 program must apply by Friday, May 14th. Let's take a quick broad look at the city's 2021 budget and costs for city services. City taxes on a residential home valued up to $341,200, which is the median value for taxes payable in 2021, will increase an estimated $41. This is for the city portion of your tax bill, about 25% of your bill. About 50% of your property tax bill goes to your school district, with 23% to Washington County, and the remaining 2% goes to other special taxing districts. Most of your city tax money goes to maintaining streets, parks, trails, and providing public safety. The estimated monthly cost to provide city services to residents in 2021 is approximately $92 per household. That's a pretty good value when you compare that to the monthly smartphone or cable TV bill. We are also increasing some fees for 2021 to help cover costs. The Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund is primarily being challenged by an increase in infrastructure replacement activity. There's a $2 per quarter increase in the administrative fixed fee for the water. The base water rate will increase by 20 cents per thousand gallons from $1.40 to $1.60 per thousand gallons. And the Commercial and Homeowner Association irrigation rate will increase from $2.95 to $3.18 per thousand gallons. In terms of other enterprise rates, the city's portion of the sanitary sewer fixed quarterly fee is increasing $1.13 per quarter. The storm sewer rate for single family homes, duplexes and twin homes will increase from $19.88 to $20.50 per quarter. There are lots of ways that residents and businesses can stay connected with the city of Woodbury. You can visit our website, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or next door. You can also sign up for our InTouch email notification service. Our Woodbury City Update newsletter is mailed to all businesses and households 10 times per year, and our recreation brochure is mailed out three times per year. And lastly, you can watch City Council and Commission meetings, as well as other programming at swctc.org and our City YouTube channel. Meetings can also be viewed on SWCTC channels 16 and 18. That wraps up our State of the City for 2020. We look forward to what's in store for 2021, which we hope will include more in-person opportunities for you to engage with me and the City Council. We are planning to have a presence at many of our annual community events. So once we can hold our favorite community get-togethers safely again, come find us. I'm excited to see you in person soon. Thank you for watching.